Hi, my name is Steve Hitman from CBC Bearings and Power Transmission. Today we're going to briefly look at the installation and removal of a taper lock bush. First thing we need to consider are the components required to do this job. First component required is the taper lock bush itself. This taper lock bush comes complete with the grub screws required and also an installation sheet which comes with the bush. The other component required is obviously the unit which we're going to install to the shaft. In this case we're using a three groove pulley complete with a taper lock adaption. Other components required, we need a key, key for the shaft, an allen key set, and an adapter, an allen key adapter to match the torque wrench. We also require some type of lubricant, in this case an anti-seize product and or a light oil. We'll need a limp free cloth. We also need a hammer for installation purposes and also a correctly sized drift for installation. We'll also be using a measuring device, in this case a vernia. And for removal, we'll need a bladed screwdriver. The first step in the installation procedure is to ensure that all components are clean. We do this by using a lint free cloth. We need to ensure that the external surface of the taper lock bush and also the shaft, where the shaft will go through the bush, is all nice and clean. We do this with a lint free cloth. And also we need to do that same procedure with the bore of that pulley. While doing this, we need to also ensure there are no nicks and burrs on the bore of the pulley. We do this by feel. And we also repeat that with the taper lock bush by ensuring there's no nicks and burrs around that outside surface. Once we've done this, we take our component, in this case the pulley, we insert the bush into the pulley, ensuring that we match holes, not threads. Once you've done this, you will see that the threaded holes in the pulley match the unthreaded holes in the taper lock bush. This needs to be done on both sides. We then take the grub screws. We ensure that we have some lubricant on the threads and also on the point of the grub screw. We insert those into place. Firstly one, the first couple of threads, and then the second. These are then inserted down only finger tight. So not by using any wrenches, just by finger tight. Once you've, once you've finished this procedure, you will find that the bush is quite loose within the pulley. Next we will install this unit onto the shaft. Here we have a demonstration rig typical of what you would find in the field when installing a taper lock bush to a shaft. Now that we've installed the taper lock bush into the pulley and done the grub screws up only finger tight, the next step is to ensure the shaft size is correct and will marry up to the taper lock bush. We do this by taking a pair of verniers, taking a quick measure of that, and then comparing that measurement to the size which is found etched into the taper lock bush. In this case, they're both 30 millimeter. We then take the pre-assembled unit here and we slide that onto the shaft. This should be a relatively easy fit, slide fit. The next step is to take the key, insert the key into position, this should be a relatively firm fit and may require 
the assistant so they a couple of top, a couple of short taps for their mouth to get that key into place. Once the key is inserted, it's very important to have an air gap between the top of the key and the top of the bush. And in this case, yes, we do have an air gap. The reason for this is that it won't then crack the bush by having that key too high. We then take our Allen key sets, insert those into the bush, tightening those evenly to ensure the tapers are marrying evenly. We tighten, that up, tighten them up as tight as possible. We now take our, our torque wrench with our Allen key adapter on the end of that and we insert that into those grub screws and we do those up to a predetermined torque measurement which is found on the instruction sheet and in this case uh, 50 newton metres of torque. We insert those in there and again we nice and evenly ensuring that we, we alternate between between grub screws, making sure we get a nice even take up. There we go. Okay. The next part of the procedure is to grab our drifts. Okay, the next part of this procedure is to find a couple of drifts or a drift to suit. Generally, we, we prefer to use a dislimmer material to the cast iron so we don't cause any damage to that bush. In this case, we have a, a very hard plastic drift, ensuring that that fits over the shaft. So this bush then, then clears the shaft. We go to the front face of the taper lock, giving it a couple of quick, quick taps. The purpose of this is to actually ensure that the Take a lot of bushes inserted and seated correctly within the pulley. Now that we've done this, we need to go back to our torque wrench and just to ensure that those torque, the, the torque settings are correct. Okay, that's perfect. By hearing that click on the on the torque wrench ensures that we're, we're at the set at the correct torque level. Fantastic. That concludes the installation of the taper lock bush into the pulley and the next session we'll be looking at the removal of this bush. Now that we've shown you the installation of the taper bush into the pulley, what we're going to do now is um, show you the, re the removal procedure. By taking our Allen key set, we go into those, those bushes which we have installed, removing those, these should be relatively tight, or they will be tight, as per the way we installed them. So we re we remove both grub screws, and the pulley will be still tight in position due to the long, shallow taper on the taper lock. We then retain one of our grub screws, and we go into the removal hole. The removal hole will be threaded on the taper lock bush and blank on the pulley. By installing the grub screw into the removal hole, again taking our Allen key set and tightening that, what you'll find is that you will that will then push the taper lock off the pulley. Here we go. What you may find is that the taper lock bush is still actually tight on the shaft which it is, still relatively tight. This is where we use our screwdriver, insert the screwdriver into the split within the taper lock bush, and give that a couple of gent gentle taps. That will then open the taper lock bush and make it much easier for removal. There we go, we're ready to go for our next installation. That concludes today's Procedure of installation and removal of a table lock bush. We trust you've enjoyed it. Should you require any further information, please don't hesitate to contact us uh, via our website 